but I needed to see this whole process. I needed to do it this way to really understand how. What's up, Lazy Dog fam? Hope all y'all are having an awesome day. It is Wednesday, June 21st here in South Georgia. And on today's video, we're gonna try to get some of these beautiful little turmeric plants in the ground. And I've also got some ginger here that I think will plant as well. So about a month, month and a half ago, we tried something we never tried before, which was pre-sprouting our turmeric in the greenhouse. So we used one of these trays here that doesn't have any holes in the bottom, put some pro mix in there, stacked our little turmeric pieces in there, and it took a little time, but now we have some beautiful turmeric plants ready to go in the ground. But before I kind of show you our planting strategy and we get those in the ground, let's back up a little bit and talk about how we got to this point. So in the summer of 2021, two years ago, one of our subscribers sent us a handful of turmeric tubers and we planted those in this raised bed right here that currently has some horseradish growing in it. So that turmeric did pretty well in that little fire ring raised bed. It seemed to really like the shade from this pecan tree here behind me. And we ended up harvesting about a Ziploc gallon bag full of turmeric from that little raised bed. So we took some of that harvest, dried it, ground it up so we could use it in smoothies and cooking. And the rest of it we saved and replanted again in the spring of 2022, right here behind me. We planted it in the ground in the spring, but it didn't really come up until say mid to late summer when it got really, really hot. So in the summer of 2022, throughout the fall months, it grew right here in this row, which we've since replanted. We'll talk about that in a minute and did pretty good right here. Now we didn't necessarily get a bumper harvest from this 40 foot in ground spot here, but we did okay. I think we ended up getting about three, three and a half gallon bags. Did the same thing all over again. We dried a little bit, ground some up, put the rest in the fridge so we could replant it later. And then a month or so ago, we took all those turmeric tubers that we had left over from last year's harvest, broke them up into little pieces, put them in these trays here with some pro mix, had them on a heat mat to keep them nice and warm. And most of them have sprouted really well. And so that's how we got to this point. Now you may be wondering why in the world do you need to grow that much turmeric? What are you going to do with all that turmeric? And to be honest, I don't really have an end game planned at this point. It's just been really fun taking something that I knew absolutely nothing about and just slowly learning how to grow it and how to multiply it. Starting out with a little bit and now this year we're going to be planting three rows of it so we just keep multiplying our seed stock it's just been really fun to do i don't know if anything will ever come of it but i've enjoyed it nonetheless so now let's talk about our planting situation here so as you can see we've already got one row planted here this is where we had a row of turmeric last year we were using some of these red wood chips last year for weed suppression it worked pretty good last year but i needed to rake those out of the way to kind of redo this one row we did have a few volunteers in here that sprouted from little pieces that we didn't harvest or that we missed last year those are those larger plants you see there so those are the volunteers and then i came in here a few days ago and kind of filled in the gaps with some of those little baby turmeric plants we had in the greenhouse and that's how we got a full row here but as you saw earlier we probably got more than enough plants for at least two more 40 foot rows here so what i've done was put in some drip tape lines. I put these in several weeks ago. This ground was pretty hard before we started getting all this rain and I couldn't really cultivate it. I tried with the wheel hoe, but I was just kind of scratching the surface. So I put some drip lines down here, kind of get this area moistened up a little bit. Then I was able to cultivate it with the wheel hoe. And I came out here earlier, made a little furrow, walk down here so we can see it better. So I made a little furrow with the wheel hoe, put some Nature Safe 855 in that furrow, laid the drip tape back down in the furrow, and then I've been covering up the furrow, making a little bed here with some of those old composted wood chips that we use in our raised beds. 
So I need to finish off the ends of those two rows right there with more compost. And then I'll show you how we kind of tease apart these turmeric plants in the tray and talk about the advantage of pre-sprouting them like we did. All right, so a couple more wheelbarrow loads later, we got our beds finished. So now let's talk a little bit more about what we've got going on right here. Now it is my understanding that you don't have to do this right here. You can grow turmeric almost like a perennial. So instead of harvesting all the turmeric, rinsing it off, letting it dry a little bit, putting it in the fridge and replanting it the next year, you can just leave it in the ground and it will re-sprout the following year. But our goal here was to really multiply what we had so i thought the best way to do that would be to dig it all up split it in little pieces and then replant those little pieces that way we turn one row into three rows now the other reason i wanted to pre-sprout these goes back to what i was telling you earlier about our 2022 planting although we planted the turmeric in the spring it didn't come up to say july when it got really really hot outside so that told us something about these plants here they don't want to sprout until it gets really, really hot. So by pre-sprouting them in the greenhouse, it gives us a little bit of a head start. Now, I probably should have pre-sprouted these sooner than I did, but at least now I know the technique can be done like we did it. And then the third reason I wanted to do this was so that I could see just how frugal we can be when we split these turmeric pieces up and replant them. So last year, when we did our 2022 planting over there, I broke the turmeric fingers up into tiny little pieces. And I could tell that every piece I planted didn't come up. So I thought, well, I need to figure out just how big a piece I need to plant to ensure that I get a plant. So doing it like this, we can kind of see that all the little fingers aren't forming a sprout there. Most of them are, but all of them aren't. So that tells me, yeah, you can get a little bit frugal with it, but don't plant a tiny, tiny piece. Now, what we can do with this larger piece here is we can break this up, which I'll show you in a minute, and get several plants off this one kind of knob here. So from this one piece of turmeric here, we've got some nice roots developing there, and we've got seven sprouts there that I can count. So when I planted that other row that I showed you a bit ago, what I did was I would just pull up a hunk like this out of the tray, and then I would kind of cut off a finger that had a plant. My goal was to not have more than one plant in a place so i didn't want to plant any doubles so i just come in here and kind of trim that off a little bit like that so we've got a little piece of turmeric there we can see our plant kind of the main root of the plant and this is what we'll put in the ground now here's another example of not all the fingers forming sprouts or maybe not all the fingers forming sprouts at the same time so we've got one sprout over here kind of on the back of this piece and i don't know if you can see it but there's some tiny little sprouts there on those three fingers right there so what i've been doing in this case is i'm going to cut off oh dropped it here we go now i can show you so i cut off that one plant we'll put that in the ground and then this piece right here which just has some tiny sprouts forming. I've been putting that back in the tray, waiting on those to get a little bit bigger, and then we can plant those. And so by putting these little plants in the ground, as opposed to this, I can get my spacing a little more accurate because these will be sticking out of the soil. I don't have to make a furrow there, lay the tubers in the furrow, and then cover it up. Just makes things a little more easier to do it that way. So what I've been doing is just kind of splitting these up on the back of the buggy here, getting me a basket full of plants. Some of these have a pretty good little root system on them. Some of them just a tiny little root system. But I get me a basket full of plants and then head over to my spot. And for my grow outs the past couple years, it appears that we can plant these things pretty tight. So I've been putting the plants about eight inches apart or so, maybe closer to six inches apart in some cases. We're stacking them in here pretty thick along the road. All right, and so that's what it looks like when we're done. We got some short plants in there, some taller plants in there, but if this first row is any indication, they should all catch up to one another pretty quickly. 
and I've still got quite a few plants left we got half of this tray another tray and a half in the greenhouse I took the pieces that hadn't sprouted or that didn't have tall sprouts out of this tray consolidated it with this tray add a little pro mix so I'm sure we'll get some more plants out of that one in the next couple weeks now I know some of you experienced turmeric growers out there are probably thinking man you're making this way too complicated you don't have to do all those steps just to grow some turmeric and you're probably right but I needed to see this whole process I needed to do it this way to really understand how turmeric grows and hopefully you have enjoyed kind of seeing the progression as well and now back over here where it all started in this area we call the garden of neglect we've got a couple beds that we need to plant and i've got some stuff we can put in there i have cleaned this up a little bit since i showed it to you last we got our herb bed kind of pruned up looking pretty good there topped off some of these beds our okinawan spinach plants looking much better got some horseradish plants popping up through the soil there I pruned up my thyme a little bit to give those garlic chives some room to breathe and they're popping up nicely there. So the last time we were over here I asked you all what we should plant in these two empty beds. I said it's got to be something relatively low maintenance and something that's going to stay in there a while. We don't flip these beds a whole lot. We had a lot of great suggestions but the two things I settled on were asparagus and ginger. So coincidentally, not long after that video aired and we started getting a lot of great suggestions of what to plant in those beds, I got an email from MI Gardener talking about some end of season sale they were having on some of their plants that included asparagus. So I got some asparagus here. Probably not the best time to be planting asparagus down here, but these didn't cost much. They were having a pretty good sale on them. So I grabbed some of these. Also grabbed some more horseradish plants while I was at it I figured we can add to our horseradish bed a little bit there and then a couple weeks ago Brooklyn was in Tallahassee and I told her to swing by Trader Joe's and get me a few little bags of this ginger here now I was going to try to pre-sprout it like we did the turmeric but instead I just kind of put it in the dark part of the pantry there and it's already got little sprouts forming on it so it should take off pretty quick so we'll start off with our ginger here and I actually tried growing ginger that same year we grew turmeric first which was 2021 and that bed over there where the spinach plant is and never really did anything probably my fault I think I'm going to cut this up a little bit here especially on these pieces that have multiple sprouts kind of break them up a little bit and just kind of kind of evenly space these out in this bed here shouldn't be too complicated getting this stuff to grow so we got a few more little pieces here we'll put a couple in the middle there not the most exact spacing but I think it'll work then over here in this other bed we'll get this asparagus planted which I know absolutely nothing about growing this particular variety is called Mary Washington so let's see what we got here I don't even know how many plants we've got looks like one two three four plants now I do think you're supposed to plant these kind of sideways so I'm gonna make kind of a deep trench here there's a nice big old worm right there some good soil I'm gonna lay those down there kind of in that trench like I said I think this is how you do it make another trench over here lay that one in there and this stuff should multiply. I do know that. Dad gum, look at that worm right there. Goodness gracious. Look at it. That's a huge worm. And we'll put the last one uh, about right here. More worms down in there too. Some good dirt right here. And then lastly, we'll add to this horseradish bed here. Don't know much about growing horseradish either. I do know you can't ever get rid of it. So plant it in a raised bed like this. Don't put it in the ground where you're gonna need to get rid of it or use that spot for something else. This variety here is called Big Top Horseradish. So this planted at a 45 degree angle with the larger end up and the slanted end down. So it looks like we just got three pieces there. 
it says plant the slanted end down I'm guessing it's talking about that piece right there plant it at a 45 degree angle so we'll kind of lay it in there like that I reckon and see what happens so it's good to have the garden of neglect back in business there and good to get some of that turmeric planted although we've still got a good bit more to plant just got to find a spot for it and let me know in the comments below if you've got any tips for growing any of those things we just planted there learn a lot from you guys in the comments so if you've got some helpful information please share so i hope you enjoyed the video today don't forget to check out our affiliate links in the description below and go check out our website lazydogfarm.com and if you want to see how this turmeric thing all started, check out this video right here. This is when we first set up those little fire ring raised beds over there and planted just a little bit of turmeric, which in a couple years has given us a lot of turmeric. So check that out, and we'll see you next time right here at Lazy Dog Farm.